All right, so here's the little extra connector that it came with. And it came with a bunch, I don't know the technical name of them, but it came with a bunch of pins that go in it. This is pretty simple. Little tabs here on both sides. I already popped one out, it'll kind of just pop out. I'll put that aside. Same thing with the red one. You kind of just see here, push the little white arm up gently on both sides. All right, so that's out. I'll just gently poke that. All right, and that's out. If you want, you can take off this little other little water retention ring bit. So now this is basically just a gutted plug here. So now what I did is, from when I cut the Honda wire, took a bunch of the extra wires there. So I'm basically going to have, we'll just say, left blinker, right blinker, check engine light, uh, fuel wire, oil pressure light, and I'm going to have to grab a couple more for uh, headlights and brights. All right, so grab your strand of these little connectors. I know there's a technical name for them. I'm not sure what they are. I'm just taking some wires or some uh, tin snips. Just cut the one off. Has a little extra leg here that you know from just the whole strand. Just gonna grab it like so. And I just kind of bend it a little bit. And it's gone. So now I've got the connector. So I know there's a, uh, an actual tool that helps crimp this. I don't have it. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is gonna be fine. Grab some of my extra wire. Just kind of strip some of that. And then when you put it, when you slide it in, you'll kind of feel it hit like a wall. I'm gonna trim a little bit of the wire off, just a little bit more so I don't have any sticking out of the back of the connector. So I'm just kind of shove it in there like so. And if you see, pretty much grabbing onto the wire now and everything else. So this is what's not, I guarantee this is not proper. I don't have the right tool, but this is kind of how I did for all my relays and stuff. Just kind of squeeze it, squeeze both. And that really won't help you fit in there. Yes, it's locked in, but it's kind of like janky looking. I'm gonna grab these pliers, put just both of the actual pieces that I just crimped a second ago and just sort of flatten them and for a last safety little measure I'm just gonna add a little bit of solder to it yep my iron is definitely dirty all right so now I already know it's kind of crimped soldered and you can look it up Basically, if you just Google aim dash wiring diagram, it's got a nice diagram that'll come up on Google. We're working with this connector that's over here. And if you look, it's got all the analog inputs. So basically, it just goes in order. So from the top of the connector, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, ten, blah, 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 just goes in order. So the current number that I am at, I just put one in analog 10 or analog input four. I just put it in pin 10. So I'm going to put the next one in pin 11, which is analog input 5. So 11. So second row, first one is 9, 10, 11. So third pin over in the second column. So you can kind of see how I'm... So if you look at this connector now here too, there's like little... Uh, you'll be able to see it if you can't see it on the camera. It's like little retention pieces here. They're all over it, so you really can't put it in wrong, I guess. They'll just kind of hold it. So... Find the middle row, one, two is where my pin, my blue one is, three, so that's nine, 10, 11, which is what we said. Let's just double check again. Yep, pin 11 is input five. I'm just gonna slide it in. And you'll kind of feel it grab, and if you look on the other side, it's sticking out the most. I kind of just tug it a little bit, you tug them all, they kind of have, I'm not saying yank on them, but they all have a little retention. So I'm just gonna keep doing that for all of them as you've already seen, I've started and just kind of filling them up. All right, so all the wires are in now. Red piece is pushed in. And I've got all of them just gonna cut the same length. I've got my other little red piece here and I'm basically just gonna slide these wires straight through them. You just gotta make sure this is lined up in sequence with that. So, I'll just shove that wire through there. And then we've got 
two, three, four, five, and six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And the yellow is six. Now I'd recommend before you actually seal this up to basically just write down what analog pins you're using if you're not using all of them, what wire colors and something like that just so you remember when you're inside the car. Once it's on there, kind of do the same thing with this black piece over here. The back little coupler. This piece is a tad bit easier. All right, all my wires are through that piece now. This is just kind of a push down and she's locked. So what I'm gonna do now, as with everything for the most part, I'm gonna loom this just so it looks a little prettier. This is a piece of half inch. I can get it open there. Nice. Now the other harness that comes with your kit has got like a heat shrink all around this. I'm pretty sure it's to keep everything to make it nice and watertight. I hopefully should not have my car submerged in this case and it's not like an outdoor thing. I get why they do it because you have no idea what dash, you know, what application you'll be using it for. But in my case, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave a little bit of the wires showing here and enough out here that I can still work with them and know what's going on. So this may not even be enough to actually, you know, let the wires connect to individual things, but we'll see. It's, I think it should be. So now I'm basically going to strip the ends of all of these. So the back of the cluster's got four little screw points into it and they actually unscrew. Not that you have to unscrew them, but they do come unscrewed. So the idea is, kill me, I've butchered this gauge cluster. My wonderful neighbor, as you saw a minute ago, cut a nice piece that's gonna lay in there. And the idea is this is gonna come sit on the front and I have to just match these four holes up on the back here. All right, so here's the messed up piece, right? So we're gonna call this bar the center, and out of these three marks, we're gonna assume that's also the center. So the messed up one I'm gonna use now, I put a piece of tape on the top here. So I put this through here. That way I can mark the top of the actual gauge. And I'm gonna line the AIM logo up with the center here, with this little dot, this little piece down here, which is about right there. And if you just look at it, I know you can't see in the camera, this looks just honestly centered. So I should have probably done something like this in the first place, so I learned from my mistake. There's a Sharpie. So now as I hold this centered with the tape, we're just gonna kind of mark both sides of it. So now we're gonna take that over to my brand new piece that we just made. Drew a line there for the center again. I'll be able to kind of transfer this over. All right, so there's the blue tape, two little lines we drew for the center of the housing. That's the other mark we went down from the housing. Kind of just lined them up in the center. Made this bottom of the aim dash flush with the little plastic we just drew. Now we're just gonna kind of do the markings again. Oh. I mean, it's just straight down. It's, I mean, we know where it's at. So there it is, we're gonna cut that out. I'm gonna be a little uh, less generous this time. There we go. So a much nicer fit, has a little bit, a little bit of some wiggle room so we can kind of 
When we drill the holes in case we're off just a little bit, we can still kind of angle this around. Again, the center line, our little center line that we drew, a piece of plastic in there. And I can, if you can see, I can move it. That's why I made the slot a little bit how it has and boom, that should be dead center of the dash. So now, put that aside, I'll flip this over. We will again eyeball or line up that to this and just mark these with a paint pen and we'll drill some holes. All right, so all four screws are in now. It had like a little bit of wiggle room, like I said, in case you need to move it to center it, which worked out now. This is just, I just took another gauge cluster that I had and I just sacrificed it. So I'm sorry if someone's upset about that. I had three of them, two SI clusters and a VTI. The VTI I obviously left untouched. This is a spare uh, SI cluster. I've got all the gauges and stuff still, but so essentially you have to cut some of this stuff out here, as you can see, when you lay this on here, I had to basically just cut out enough of this so the connectors could slide through. So. Now, as you can see, nothing's gonna clamp onto this. So this isn't holding into this housing. So the idea what I'm gonna do is, I've already kind of made one, is this bar right here. So just, just some just strap aluminum. It's gonna basically bolt, these two is gonna overlay here. And this will kind of attach, you know, to kind of keep it to the back of this cluster. And essentially gonna do something similar to the two top here. Also, that way it, it essentially affixed the cluster or the dash now to this black plastic and to this housing. So then the housing then I can snap back into this and I already dremeled it. Look at that monstrosity. Um, it's all dremeled out like that. I'll show you the end product in a few, but it's so when this gets connected again, I can still actually have access to unplugging it and unscrewing it if I need to. All right, so you can see I ran the little bar across here, which ties that mounting point, that mounting point, and then across here. A little messed up hole there, we'll ignore that. This is probably a little weird, janky kind of setup, but they're just kind of washers, so that way you can grab onto the outside of the housing here. And I was gonna put another bar across it, but I, I don't think I can get away with it because the clamps, so I still wanna be able to remove the connectors without having to like fight this bar that's there. So here it is, it sits in there and she's solid. So now, so here's the chewed up rear piece. I just opened the whole back up just so it all fits. Let's see. So hopefully you just take this and it all fits now and just kind of mount it in like you would normally. And to da, it fits just like it would. You get access to your plugs and this I'll be able to just bolt in just like you would you know your regular cluster and now you've got that there nice and sturdy all right so here's all the cluster wiring right so here's the main power harness that plugs in and here's the one that I just kind of built I already tied it into some of them so basically just look up the wiring chart that's uh, on the internet for whatever your gauge cluster is 88 to 89s are different than 9091s so I just kind of took wire tied it into one I'm going to kind of show you what I did doing those. All I have plugged into mine is my high beams right now, my left and right blinker. So the fuel wire, you're just going to find the pin. It's going to be in this connector in my case. And you're simply going to stick it in the top. Mine is the third here. So you're going to stick it in like so. You're going to feel like a little tab, pull up on it, and you kind of push and you can already see it's coming out. All right, so I went ahead and ordered the Iron Canyon Motorsports fuel level sender here now. It comes with a really nice, just little simple instructions. Basically, brown wire goes to your fuel sender wire. The white wire goes to the actual aim dash. And then blue is a five volt reference and black is a ground. So here's the end of it. Black, I just tied into the gauge cluster ground itself. So that was just a ground of the chassis. Easy just tie in there. And then I can always put a gauge cluster back, I guess, if I needed to. Um, We'll go with the the brown wire coming out of it. I added a little white wire as an extension for the moment, and that ties into the third wire in the gauge cluster. And that is my fuel level sender. Again, just look up whatever yours is for whatever your chassis is. But for us little CRX guys, 9091, it is the third wire in this plug. So I tied into that, so my fuel level output will come through there. It'll go into the box now. And then we have the black wire in this case for me and the blue wire coming out of the canyon. So the blue wire goes into me, a black wire. It comes through into the plug that we made earlier. So now a little different. So the black wire is plugged into pin four of this connector. And my gray wire is plugged into pin one. So because I made my own little harness here and I didn't buy the little 
519 connectors, which would make this job probably a bit easier, but it just costs more money too. So they re essentially input empty, like the, the 719 is basically pin one or whatever is, it says an analog input, there's a ground, there's an empty spot, and then there is a five volt reference. So in this case, I'm not using the ground because I already grounded the actual Canyon Motorsports to, my, to a ground over there. So what this black wire is, is a five volt reference for the analog input one. So these first four pins all deal with the first analog uh, input. So gray wire goes to the fuel sender, black wire goes to my blue wire for the Canyon, which is the five volt reference. Gray wire coming out goes to the white wire, which is the output five volt signal. So this is what we're going to be grabbing the millivolts from, essentially, inside the input. All right. Should bolt in, just like uh, you know your factory harness or your factory cluster. This was the game plan, at least. I'm sure there's a million ways to go about this, just the way that I chose to go about it. Gotta put the hood on. All right, so in regards to the S300, this is the extra cable it came with. I already installed it and I totally thought I was recording this process, but I did not. Um, it was on a time lapse. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense here. If you look, this is gonna slide in there and on the two end wires are basically nothing. The only wire you're gonna use for this process is the green wire in this situation. And when you look at it on your board, you're gonna plug this onto the S300 board that says TX. So it's basically the RS-232 talking. So this wire is literally gonna send all the S300 information out. And then there is one other wire on your actual, uh, your aim dash. There's basically RS-232 talking and, R and receiving, RX and TX. So the instructions tell you to say, take the talking wire from the S300 to the receiving wire of the aim dash, which makes complete sense. Talks, dash, receives. In my case, it did not work that way. I had to connect talking to talking. That may have just been a you know mislabel on Ames part or, or whatever the case may be, but if you're getting no information reading directly from it, just try swapping it like that. And this is literally it. This one wire is all that feeds from my S300 to the AIM dash. All right, so open up your map, and you're gonna click parameters. Once the parameters are open, you'll have this window. You're gonna go to digital input output. Scroll all the way to the bottom. And then you will have digital output S300, V3 only and choose AMMXL. Close out of the window and simply upload, when you're connected to your ECU, just upload the map. Okay, so when you open up Brace Studio, this is basically what it looks like, except you won't have an actual dash here. So what you would do is, I'm just gonna create a template here and then we'll go over to mine, but you'll basically just click new, choose whatever you want. So we're gonna choose my last configured, in this case, it could be an MXTRA, blah, blah, blah. blah. Just hit okay. You can make comments, whatever you want. and then it will pop up your strata here. So, because it's using my last here, what you'd click next is, you click ECU stream, and you get a whole list of whatever you want to choose from. In our case, we're going to choose Honda. And I'm going to choose K-Pro. And then it automatically assigns stuff. So like, if you want your ECTs to not view in Celsius, if you're in the UK or something, or maybe you would, but in my case, I do not. Just double click it, pops up, and you can change the unit measurement to Fahrenheit, Celsius, whatever you want. Display in one decimal place. The sampling frequency is how fast it's gonna sample it. So 10 being, let's just say the slowest, which is still really not that slow if you ask me, and one being like instantaneous if it is what it is. This, the, the bigger the number, the slower it's gonna sample it. And these are all the sensors that's just gonna reach straight up from your ECU right off the bat. Uh, for now, we're just gonna ignore all these other ones, and we can go over to shift lights and alarms. And you can essentially set up whatever you want. So you can name something, we'll just call it uh, high, high ECT, if that's what you wanna call it. And then I'm gonna say, over here when you click that channel one button again, you can choose whatever you want. So AD channels, whoops, 
AD channels is all your like your actual analog inputs. But in this case, we can just choose like ECU and we'll choose ECT. So it's gonna read that sensor now. So we're gonna say if like the ECT sensor is greater than, I don't know, we'll just say 200 degrees. Again, this is in Celsius here. Cause it doesn't save my previous changes, but if it's greater than 200 degrees Celsius, you know, which is, it, you'd be on fire. You can say uh, message, we could have LEDs pop up. Um, and so again, looking at the actual dash here, the way they're gonna count is like one, two, three, four, five, six, just kind of going down the order there. So, I mean, you have a coolant light. You do have one right there in sensor number, or three, you have number five. So if you wanted, you could say light up LED number five, and I wanna make it just continuously lit up until that parameter is not met, and we can make it red, blue, you know, cyan, whatever color you want to. So let's just say red continuously until the condition is met. And then we can also, just for whatever, we'll hit add another one. And we will change, let's click the message. We don't want to do a message. We want it to do, you could do a, a pop-up color lights up on the dash. Again, tons of things. We're just gonna display measure. So now if you notice, it automatically highlights the Honda at ECT. So if we have that anywhere on the dash, we want the, the number that's lighting up to be physically red. As of now, by default, it's just gonna be white. So if we hit 200 degrees now, basically that little, our sweet little coolant light icon that I've got here will light up red. And the actual text of my ECT temp will light up red. You just click save and that'll take that. And then you can do that for basically anything, intake temps, whatever you want, any sensor that you want that you're displaying on the dash at the time. Shift lights, I mean, you can play in here all you want to. It's pretty simplistic. I'm not gonna get totally in depth with this, but you can make a shift light per certain gears. You could do it for all the gears. You can change the colors of the lights, change the RPMs, and so forth. So I played in there. And then if you go to display, here's all your dashes. And you can have, I don't know how many max, but I've got like two set up on mine. So for just conversation's sake, we're just gonna use this one. Boom, it lights it up, and notice there's nothing there. So it's gonna be simple. If you just wanna put, uh, we'll just click this field right here. And it lights up over here. What do you want to put into it? We're going to just say ECU for, for this one and ECT. Double click it. And boom. You can see it says Honda added ECT and it's in Celsius again. And you can rename it. If you just double click this, we can call it, uh, call it whatever you want. But we'll call it coolant temp for just this. Hit enter. Just click off of it. You can see it changed to coolant temp. It says Celsius. We're going to slide over a little bit here. So we can't change it there. We're gonna go back to the ECU stream again, but RPMs, just kind of click that. And it's already reading from the Honda to RPM signal area. We obviously, we are not rubbing out to 18,000 RPMs. So in the end here, we can just click, you know, whatever we want it to rub to, we'll just say 8,000. And it changed our chart. And you can click any of these and make them say whatever they want. You can make them read off of signals, the inputs, you can make it read off the odometer that it has internally built in, you know, whatever. So. We're gonna take this, we're gonna close this for now. I'll show you what I end up building. All right, so I've got one and it's Justin's dash. Same thing, so my channels are there. And if you notice, I've added some, some simple uh, some channels. So for starters, fuel level. So when you wanna go create one, you're gonna click your, wherever you wired your fuel level and your stuff into, I went into channel one. So basically you could just double click it and name it whatever you want. So I named mine fuel level. When you click them, you're going to choose the function that you want. In my case, I wanted percentage. And the sensor, which we'll show you to create. I'm going to read off my fuel capacity sensor that we're going to make. Sampling frequency, it's very twitchy. It reads, this thing is way more precise and accurate than your, your stock temp gauge or your stock uh, fuel gauge. So I raised mine all the way out to 1,000 hertz. Uh, unit of measurement, we want to do percentage. I'm just going to hit cancel mine. You're going to hit save. So after that's created, if you go up to this button up here, you have sensors. So pretty simplistic. We're just going to create a new one just to show you. And we'll just call it uh, fuel tester. Okay, it's missed bubble, whatever the case, you get it. You call yours whatever you want. My real one's called fuel capacity. So you'll choose the measure type. Again, you'll choose percent. 
and then whatever your millivolts are through your tank. So if you can just figure out whatever your, you know, if you can drain your tank, drain it, uh, get a value of whatever the millivolts are, enter them, we'll just say, you know, it, it, it's zero. It's not gonna be, but let's just say it's zero, and your percentage is zero percent then, and then millivolts, maybe just 5,000 is, you know, 100 percent. You would just type that in, and it just builds that chart, and you have it. Once you're done with it, you're simply just gonna click save. I'm not gonna save this. So I've got mine, which is my fuel capacity, which is, I'm just kind of tweaking it as I go here. So my millivolt reading right now so far, 610 kind of gives me 100%, 850 I got 72% right now, and 1040 is got me at 64%. You can see my chart's kind of there, it's got a little bit of a little weird curve going on there. And I think that's because when I got this, uh, this middle one here, which I might end up just deleting later, I kind of got it in a, I, I didn't do my math exactly accurate. I was basing it off me having a tank of uh, 10 gallons as opposed to 11.9. All right, so you're going to have to know your inputs and what you put them in there. So for instance, for me, I'm using my the input two is my left blinker. So again, I rename on the left blinker, just double click it, rename it. The function, instead of percentage, we made it a number. 10 hertz again, unit of measure is a number. So it's basically a zero and a one. And then my sensor is going to be blinker. So before you create the blinker, you need to know what's kind of coming into it. So we're going to go back to all. Click down here again, it gives you everything that's coming in. So left blinker right now is reading nothing. If I hit the millivolts, you can see all the inputs that are just kind of coming in. So this does vary a little bit when the car is on and off. So I recommend putting it on, but for the moment, I'm just gonna leave it off just for this demonstration because my left blinker and everything's already configured and this, it's pretty similar. So if I go ahead and flip my left blinker on the dash, you can see how my number's drastically changing right now. We'll say the middle's 10,000. So with that being said, I can now go up to my sensors, and again, you can create a new one. So I created one called Blinker. So you'd go to new again, and basically what you're gonna do, instead of percent, you're gonna do number. And the millivolt, I put just 300 equals zero, and then basically when mine goes over 5,002, which is essentially the value when my car is on, is what it gives, it changes the number of my sensor here to one. So whenever this dash now, sees basically a, uh, or whenever the sensor reads over 5002 it turns to a, a value of one and kind of whenever it's below that then it reads zero so knowing that you, you would go back go back to your dash that you created and we're going to go to shift lights and alarms you can see i've got quite a few made down in here so once you're in here you're just going to click add new alarm Kind of like I showed you earlier, and you can see in my case I did left blinker is what I named my new alarm, and it's pretty simplistic. So I said when left blinker is greater than zero, because we know once that thing reads, once analog input reads voltage more than 5002, it's going to turn to a one. So once it's lighter than that, we'll have LED one lighting up continuously in the color of green. So if we look in the dash right now, I put the left blinker on, and there it is, it lights those up. So you're gonna do the same exact thing essentially for your right blinker, which I already have mine configured. And then I have another analog input put in for my brights. So you can see the little brights icon lights up. So again, all you're gonna have to do is just make the same sensors, just different things, and you have knowing what your input is. It's, it's pretty straightforward, I feel. Um, and then I created some other ones. So like my high temp, uh, so in the coolant, when my coolant sees above 198 to me, the little coolant uh, icon on my dash lights up red, and the ECT, you know, the text that I've got displayed lights up red as well. And I did the same thing for the IAT. Um, and you can do this pretty much for any sensor that's coming into it. Uh, so it's pretty snazzy. Low fuel, I got my little fuel icon coming on when it's less than 60%. And that's about all I got. My dash physically... At the moment, looks like this. So I got, just got off a long drive. So that's just that IAT is just from the under the hood being heat. So if I'm driving, it's definitely not that. But and again, so my fuel level reads a little high. If I turn the car on, it just everything gets its proper voltage, and that will drop down back to I think it reads like 101 right now. But so I've got my battery displayed, my odometer, fuel level, intake temp, and coolant temp. And a little button here on the side. If I push it, this is what I'm calling like my sensor screen. So I can view my air to fuel, my boost, uh, my ignition timing, my throttle percentage. Just, I mean, I can put whatever I want on that there. Go to the next page. I think I was just kind of exploring. I've got like some actual gauges. But uh, so that tells me my gear, miles per hour, RPM, plus my RPM right out there. And that 
is just my actual check engine light. So if it's lit up, that'll read a one or it'll read a zero. And then I'll just read it later on with either my phone or whatever the case. All right, I know that was a pretty long video, but hopefully it just kind of showed you in detail how I installed it. I know there's a million ways you could have installed that thing. That's just the way I did it. And I don't think I was really clear, but I have extra gauge clusters. I didn't destroy my VTI cluster. I destroyed the VTI cluster housing because I pulled the gauges out and put it in an old SI cluster. And I can't use that VTI cluster housing anyways in my US car just because the wiring and it's not worth redoing, blah, 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 whatever the case. So the dash is great. If you look them up, they have a ton of features in them that I'm not even utilizing. I do hope once the world gets a little more uh, back to normal, one of our little road tracks opens up and I can get, you know, the car kind of prepped maybe a little bit differently for a road track situation and I can get the GPS module, add that on, blah, blah, blah. They do sell another adapter harness. Um, so you don't have to make your own harness. You could just buy the 719 cable leads and whatnot. You could do that if you look that up. Um, it would make things a little bit easier. It's just like another, I don't know, 140, 150 bucks. and just felt like I don't mind doing some wiring myself. So that's why I went that route. But if you don't want to run blinkers or anything like that, it is literally just three wires. Positive ground from the dash to a switch 12 volt, which you don't have to even run down to the fuse box. You could literally just tap it in if you wanted right to the gauge cluster wiring plugs. Like I already tapped into one of the grounds. The other one you can just type into the cluster power wire and then the third one being supposed to be the receiving wire of the dash which they're labeled i know i didn't put them in the video but they're 100 labeled you can't mix them up uh going to the green wire on the s300 which is the talking wire that being said again i had to do mine was talking talking whatever the case so if yours doesn't read just swap those two but that's it you only need those three and you can read whatever you want from the ecu so again i added blinkers headlights I could not add the oil pressure light because I can't, the dash doesn't, I could probably work some ways with a voltmeter and stuff, but otherwise I can't power the dash. When I turn the key to the ignition to power it up, the dash is still booting, so I can't read the millivolts that it's getting from the laptop. So if anybody does have that, put in the comments. I'd be intrigued to try it just to kind of have it as a little fail-safe dummy light, even though I've got a gauge. But uh, other than that, I will update the description of this video as time goes by with whatever I end up coming up with as my final values for my fuel. Or if someone that's watching does already have a fuel set up in a CRX, then please put it in there and I just plug mine in. We'll see how it goes. Mine's pretty close. Um, I'm not going to go below half a tank. I didn't do that anyway since the car's been running again. I just don't go below half a tank, especially with how much slosh these tanks have in general. So any amount of power you do put down and I would used to be able to watch my fuel gauge. Like if I was a three quarter of a tank and got on it, I could watch the gauge kind of go down to like half. So it just makes it easy. I hit half a tank. I just fill it up. I don't go any super long road trips with it. Um, I did order a fast brakes Wilwood kit. It is not here yet. So brake stuff should be going in the car Just kind of prepping it for whatever the case in the future. So can't wait for that Still got to make a splitter that I want to do I still got a ton of things that I want to do that I probably need another videos I just need to get around to doing them and most of it I have the stuff It's a matter of just finding time to do what I'm doing right now talking to all of you wonderful people that are watching and just life in general so This is gonna be the end of that just because this video is already super long. I do appreciate everyone that's watching uh, Still can't believe that I even hit over a thousand subscribers and, and the whole shebang here. If you're a subscriber or not a subscriber, I still appreciate it. It's just crazy that the channel has gone as far as it has gone. Never anticipated that still. I know I feel like I say that every single time, but it, it really is awesome to me. If you guys do have any questions or comments, concerns, whatever that you've seen, uh, please do put them down below. I'm, I'll pretty much try to read every single thing that anybody says just out of, you know, who knows what someone's going to say. Or message me on Instagram, whatever the case is, and I'll try to get back to it as soon as possible. So... I really, again, hope you guys found something informative of this video, whether it's good or bad, take it, and uh, hope you guys continue watching and stay tuned for more stuff.